Hello everyone, thanks for pressing play. You are watching a brand new episode of Talking Comics, Excalibur CCG TV, where every week we come together to tell you about the great comics hitting the shelf. We are talking about October 5th, 2016. I am Chris. And I am Randy. We are Excalibur Comics, Cars, and Games here in Shreveport, Louisiana, as well as in Texarkana, Texas. You can always find out what's going on with us at our website, ExcaliburCCG.com. And also follow our Facebook and Twitter links. They are in the description down below. Thank you to all of our new subscribers. We really appreciate you being a part of our community. So whether you're coming by website or by iTunes or Stitcher, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come over to YouTube and subscribe to us over here as well. If you enjoy the show, we really appreciate you being a part of it all. And guys, this week is a huge week. Yeah. Huge. As much as we're going to cover, there's still a couple of things that we won't be covering. It's just huge. A lot of big stuff going on. If you have delicate ears, cover your ears. But, for those of you who don't, if you look in the dictionary under the word shit ton, <laughs> you would have October 5th new comics. New just a, just a ton. Metric, literal ton that we'll be getting here in the store for everybody, all of our customers, all of that jazz. So Metric ton, I guess that's also the best. That was right. I thought about it. I was, like, I was thinking, is that right? I don't get to remember. Which, well, no. I mean, that's, that's probably the better way to say it than what I said. <laughs> that totally works. Hey, guys, real quick, thank you for all of your awesome comments for last week and your discussion about the sunk cost fallacy that we discussed. Really appreciate the turnout for that and all the discussion that we had for that. Hopefully you'll like our question of the week that we have this week. But guys, we're going to dive in to some new number ones. And by some, I'm just paraphrasing because it's a ton of them. <laughs> but we're diving into a ton of new number ones. And I'm going to start it off with Marvel Comics. This is their event. This is this is not their event, but it is kind of an event. Yeah, it, it is now. Now. Or as, as it appears on our books, uh, on our uh, uh, for, for the listings, what we're getting in this week. Yeah. It's not listed as champions it's it's in the ends now, now champions now this or as i'd like to say it's now marvel now <laughs> now marvel now <laughs> i like that i like we'll that see. but we'll guys see. now we get to find out what happened in those missing eight months yeah that occurred with secret wars the big event that just happened a little while ago and that we get that information with this week's death of x number one We've got jeff lemire charles soul and aaron cooter on board as the creative team this four as this four issue miniseries yeah. that's going to be coming out between now and the end of the year. This takes a look specifically at what happened eight months ago that set the Inhumans and the X Men on a collision course. The Inhumans are going to Japan, where one of the Terrigen Clouds is creating another shocking new Inhuman, and the X Men travel to Murrah Island, where another Terrigen Cloud is causing horrible things to happen there. The two are going to collide. The mutants and the Inhumans, and we will find out what happens here and get more backstory in those eight months. So check out Death of X number one if you want to find out what that eight month story is. Here we go. A lot of people have been talking about that book, saying that it's the. I'm sorry that uh, it's really not spoilers at this point because we don't know if it's happening in this or not. Uh, the, it's possibly the death of Cyclops and what happened there. Right. But what a lot of people are forgetting is. Emma Frost has been absent from everything, too. So yeah. where has she been? Yeah. Uh, Good point. Yeah. Another Marvel Now yeah. book to come out is Champions Number 1. It's Mark Wade and Umberto Ramos coming out uh, with this one. Six young superheroes are going to show that it doesn't take a Tony Stark or Captain America to change the world. You're going to have Cyclops, Miss Marvel, Spider-Man, Nova, Hulk, and Vision looking to make a brighter tomorrow for everybody. So, especially with the events of Civil War number 5 and the news of like what's going on with Miles Morales in months to come, that's going to be real interesting to see if that plays into anything with this book. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of stuff leading up to this, so yeah. I'm I'm going to be checking it out looking forward to it. Guys, all you Deadpool fans, what a combo you get this week with Deadpool back in black. That's right. During 1984's Secret War series, you know, Deadpool was there. He was like, in, he was there, quote unquote. But guys, <laughs> in this, in this, Deadpool actually gets a hold of the Black Venom symbiote, and this is what all of this is about. If you guys are fans of Colin Bunn and what he's done with the whole Deadpool kill killogy, not killology, the killogy, and Salva Espen, another, uh, he's doing the Deadpool Mercs for Money. These two are teaming up to give us another wacky story with Deadpool from the Secret Secret Wars, but with him with the Black Venom symbiote. Have fun with that. 
You guys know who you are. Five issue miniseries. Thank you, sir. Five issue miniseries. I, I'm going to be doing that a lot for you guys. This yeah, there's a bunch uh, of several of them, aren't there? Yeah. <laughs> uh, another Marvel <laughs> that yeah. we have is Jessica Jones number one. This is the return of the creative team of Brian Michael Bendis, Michael Gatos, and David Mack Covers. Yeah. With this, we are going to see how relationships for Jessica Jones have changed, are changed, are being altered. Uh, nothing is the same as what it once was for her and it may even have things to do with her daughter and her husband i uh, will see her husband being luke cage just in case any of you don't know that uh, right. Right. we're going to be taking a look at this uh series that starts off with some sort of secrets from her past coming back to wreak havoc Wreak <laughs> Havoc. Wreck Havoc. Wreck <laughs> Havoc. That's what it was. To, to wreak havoc on her and possibly some of these relationships that she has. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know if we're, we're going to get to see the, uh, the the Netflix universe bleeding over into this where suddenly Patsy Walker's a part of her life because Patsy Walker never was. Okay. Uh, that was Carol Danvers was always a character, but they couldn't use her in the Netflix series. Right. So... Ongoing series with this, so yeah. no of anything. So new relationship right there. New relationship. I wonder if Nuke will be in there too. That would be cool. Yes. I, Nuke. I'm sorry. David Tennant was was he was good. His the latter half of the season was awesome with David. Tennant. Yes. But Nuke was phenomenal all the way through. Uh, his, yes. His we won't get on the rabbit hole, but his story arc was great. Yeah. And I, I really hope that he shows up in The Punisher. I, I want him to show up again. Yes, totally. So, guys, there we go. Jessica Jones, don't miss that. <laughs> hey, guys, there is a, a Luke Cage series on the stands, but this week we get a new Cage number one series, four issues from Marvel by Jendi Tartak. Tartakovsky. There we go. Finally got it. I know I know Brad Campbell's yeah, really excited about this. Grinding his teeth at your <laughs> destroying the name there. Tartak Tartakovsky. There we go. But he's he's the guy who's done Dexter's Laboratory, Samurai Jack, Hotel Transylvania. This was an old just dating series, mini series that yeah. he did years ago that's finally publishing. So here we go, guys. Take we get to take a look at Cage in Harlem, where the shoes are big, the shirts are large, the bottoms are belled, and crime is rampant. But we have our smack talking, hardest working, chain wearing superhero on the street and on the case, and his rates are reasonable. So there we go, guys. Have fun with this four issue cage mini series dropping this week. Big one from DC Comics here has a lot of people buzzing. Yes, six issue series. It's He Man, Thundercats number one. Yeah. Rob David's writing it. Don't know who it is. I don't yeah. think people really care about that. They care about Freddie Williams II, who was the artist behind the recent Batman TMNT crossover. Yes. What you're looking at here is Mumra may just have discovered a weapon, a legendary weapon, that can take down the Thundercats and the Sword of Omens. And that would be the sword of power that one He-Man happens to wield. So, nice. crossing dimensions, he will try to get this sword, and it's going to spark all sorts of uh, warring awesomeness between all of the uh, He-Man universe that you know and love and the Thundercats universe that you know and love. Nice, nice. I'm digging these mashups that some of these companies are doing. Yeah. Uh, we got we have, we have a new ongoing Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic coming out later this year. Yeah. People love that. All this stuff is really cool. Really cool stuff. So guys, have fun with that. All of you DC fans, and if you love Hawkman, this is your week, or maybe it's not. <laughs> because Death of Hawkman, number one, five or six issue miniseries. It is six issues, I six. think. Drop this drops this week. We have Mark Andreco on board and Aaron Lepresti. And this takes a look at Hawkman and Adam Strange coming together to find out what has happened to Alana and what has happened to Rand, Ra the planet of Rand. And we also may actually see the death of Hawkman during all of this. So, guys, all of you fans of this, this was called, like, Hawkman and Adam Strange out of time. But then they changed it to simply Death of Hawkman. So, all of you Hawkman fans, do not miss this six-issue miniseries dropping this week. And it should be noted that Hawkman is reincarnated and Hawk girl hawk woman are reincarnating quite a bit so exactly uh be prepared for that dc's doing a lot of smart things right now where they're not investing 
uh, uh, failing cause in trying to put out these ongoing series for characters and books that just aren't simply going to have numbers support them. Right. So they're putting out miniseries. It keeps the story strong and coherent and uh, finite for the fans. They have beginning, middle, and end. Again, we have another six-issue miniseries with Midnighter and Apollo. Uh, Steve Orlando, who's writing Supergirl right now, uh, is on board for this, and I don't know Fernando Blanco's uh, artwork, but I like the preview pages that I've seen with this. Yeah, uh, It's been a long time since Midnighter and Apollo have been together. They are finally reunited while having to fight subway pirates in Los Angeles and demons in Opal City. With that... They're going to find that uh, there's something out there that is is going to be truly epic that they have to battle and that it's going to be, I don't know, just like a life-altering journey for them. Uh, they're promising big things with the characters in this. Hopefully, it may lead into a new Authority series. I would love that. Man, if they could get that right again, it would be just, just yeah. so awesome. Guys, also from DC Comics uh, Vertigo side, if I'm not mistaken, we have Dead Man... Dark Mansion no, of... this is still just their main... It's the DC? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, this is a three-issue... I think it's a... Uh, it's a well, they're saying a bi-monthly... It's a bi-monthly miniseries. I think it's a three-issue kind of prestige format type series. Yeah. Uh, so, Dead Man, Dark Mansion of Forbidden Love, number one from DC Comics, with Sarah Vaughn and Lan Medina on board here, taking a look at an old gothic mansion that de- Dead Man must battle the forces of darkness alongside Berenice, a young woman with a complicated love life. We get to see that happen bi-monthly with this new series, Romance, Mystery, and Evil Await. So you guys are fans of Dead Man, have fun with that. I'm I'm curious as to how they're going to introduce Dead Man into the CW TV series, if we might get to see him soon. So there we go, guys. Have fun with that. Oh, we'll see. Uh, Image Comics has a big one I think both of us are really looking forward to. Uh, this is Moonshine number 1 from The Incomparable. Brian Azzarello and Edward Orisso yep. that gave us 100 bullets. Uh, that big team finally back together. Uh, in this, it's set in the age of Prohibition, mm-hmm. and we're taking a look at uh, Lou Pirlo. Lou Pirlo is big city New York. Yep. Traveling down to small town West Virginia, Appalachians, yep. where he is going to, I guess, use all his big city charm and big city... Uh, Knowledge to try to strong arm a deal with the best moonshiner in West Virginia. Yeah. However, <laughs> this guy <laughs> is just as vicious, just as sharp as any of the big city bosses. Exactly. exactly. And he happens to have a dark family supernatural secret. Something that you don't want unleashed in, well, not the sunlight, uh, Moonlight. Exactly. Moonlight. Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> Well, sunlight we know is vampires. They don't want to go out in that time. Yeah. But yeah. but then you don't want to see something coming out during the full moon. <laughs> I know. So. Exactly. And, and I like the concept with this. It gives us some horror with the mm-hmm. whole uh, noir twist to it. Exactly. So I'm really looking forward to that. And man, Eduardo Russo's art. I love, 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 love. Yes. It's beautiful. It's very good. And quick aside, I... Uh, Azarello sent out PDF copies to retailers. I had a chance to read this. Guys, add it to your list. You're going to love it. So, guys, speaking of more image stuff, we have Cannibal number one dropping this week from Brian Bucoletta and Matthias Bergero. This drops. This is Cannibal. This is taking a look at a can, not a cannibal, but there is a there's a cannibal pandemic that's going on in the Everglades. And with no cure in sight, nobody knows what to do with these people or how to survive what is going on. This takes a look at Cash and Grady Hansen, and they have come up with a simple answer for this. Don't know how long it's going to last for them, but it's just to kill them all. <laughs> so there we go, guys. Uh, this kind of, it's not a zombie, but there's, it, I've seen some preview pages. Yeah. And while it looks, it, it's not zombie stuff, people are eating people. And they're, <laughs> they're totally like coherent, like you and I. So there we go, guys. This, if you like that type of horror, this is going to be right up your alley. Kind of like a cross, almost? Maybe. Little. little maybe, maybe there's that, some that kind of craziness going on. I'm not sure. Yeah. Next from uh, Young Animal. Yeah. That's that's a big series, or hot right now. We have Shade the Changing Girl, number one. This is uh, Cecil Castellucci, who uh, brought us to Plain Janes. And, uh, okay. Marley Zarcone, who was the artist on Effigy. Okay. With these, we're taking a look. Uh, let me prepare myself here. I know, because it's huge. <laughs> is, they love to tell you what the story is. It isn't the, the Mark Wade, 
or uh, Mark Miller. It, it's this meets this. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, they let you know. Uh, when bored teen Loma steals Rax Shade's infamous madness coat, she goes on the run and finds herself ending up in the body of the Earth Girl Megan Boyer, who was in a coma. Yep. Now she wakes up. And she thinks that she's going to have the easy life on the backwater planet, only to find that she is not only having trouble keeping her mind coherent, mm -hmm. probably due to the coat, uh, <laughs> but she also happened to embody the one person that pretty much everybody wanted dead. And it happens to be that Megan was like the school bully. So everybody is That's not right. too great, too happy to see her up and about. So interesting concept with this. Uh, if you read Doom Patrol, that was a pretty weird book. We'll see uh, so if this is just that. as, as yeah. weird. Uh, so then it also brings up the question: possibly, will we get to find out if, if if another person put her in that coma because of her bullying? Yeah, there, yeah, so, there could be that. And, that's interesting. I mean, she has people obviously looking for her uh, yeah. with her being on the run in it. Very cool. Very cool. Young animals knocking it out of the park. They're coming out strong, swinging strong here. So, guys, also from Image Comics, Green Valley, number one. From this is nine issues. Nine issues. Max Landis and Giuseppe Comancoli, they are teaming up for this nine-issue series, taking a look at the Knights of Colodia as they are in the finest land around, but they face the power of... Uh, that they've never seen before in the Green Valley. They've been showing preview pages of this in the back of recent Image Comics and stuff. And there's, there's even in those preview pages, there's, there's humor. The art looks great. So check this out, guys. A period piece, kind of medieval times, uh, medieval times uh, period. And we get to find out what they're facing in the Green Valley. Okay, give us another uh, image book. Another one that I'm going to be checking out too. That I uh, am really interested in is from Image Top Cow Studios Romulus Number One from Brian Hill and Nelson Blake teaming up together to bring us this. This world is not free, people. In case you do not know, there is a cost associated with everything. And for generations, we have lived under the secret control of the ancient order of Romulus. But now there is one young woman who has been raised by them, trained by them. Now she's going to be betrayed by them. She has to push through her fear to take a stand against this evil that are the masters of the world. And it looks like she has a secret helper along with this who could possibly be her mother. That is one that set the seeds for this type of betrayal against the masters of the world. So I'm really looking forward to this. We follow the journey of Ashlar and as her war begins here in this first issue of Romulus. Definitely going to be checking it out. Black Mask Studios gives us <laughs> possibly what is going to be the most controversial book of the year. Black, number one. Yes. Kwanzaa. Uh, also Jeffo sure, and uh, Jamal Engel that we all should know. The I mean, great artists. Yes. Uh, Supergirl and uh, Molly Danger, mm -hmm. lots of different books there. Wonderful artists. Oh. They are bringing their Kickstarter book that uh, blazed through Black History Month uh, 2016 to Black Mask Studios. Yeah. With this, you're taking a look at a world where only black people have superpowers. Yep. How do we know this? Well, one t uh, young man happens to find out because he has a run-in with the police where he is shot and somehow miraculously survives. Yeah. Now he's having to make the choice. He ha He's learned this truth and he's having to, to, to figure out, do I keep this a secret mm -hmm. or do I blow this wide open? Yeah. So it's, it's going to be a big one. We'll see uh, just what, you know, they, they ask for funds from Kickstarter. We'll see just what they have produced. It's yeah. going to look beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, with Jamal on board, I was like, I did not realize he was on board. I was like, yes, this is on my list. I'll be checking it out. Another one, guys, from Aftershock Comics, Shipwreck, number one. Warren Ellis, Phil Hester are teaming up again. Yeah. But they've done stuff in the past that never was published, but this is their they are teaming up for this creator-owned book from Aftershock Comics. Shipwreck number one, taking a look at Dr. Jonathan Shipwright, who is the sole survivor of a very unusual and very secret shipwreck, and he does not know where he is. 
this is going to take a look at him on this endless road to try to find out who he is, what he's doing, what he's doing on that ship. And there is a saboteur who holds the key to his salvation or his doom with this story. We can take a look at this story with shock, secrets, and surprises. And with Warren Ellis and Phil Hester on board, this is, this is going to be a must read. you got to check this out. Guys, those are the number ones. Dear Lord, have mercy. There are so many. And there's more. There are a few more, too, that Betty we didn't. Uh, yeah, Betty Boop. We got uh, Big Trouble Little China Escapes New York or whatever. Trigger Man. Trigger Man. <laughs> there were several other ones, too, guys. But, guys, those are the number ones that we're covering for this week. Yeah. We're going to dive into some storylines now because we have several of those to cover as well. DC is still continuing the Night of the Monster Men. We got Batman number eight dropping this week, which is part four. Of Night of the Monster Man. Giant monsters might be bad, but Gotham's heroes encounters a whole new threat level when two of their own start terrorizing the city. So we get to find out what happens with that in Batman number eight. And part five continues in Nightwing number six. I think this should be rounding it off. Maybe it, it finishes up in Detective. I'm uh, not sure. I, I don't know, but it finishes up this month. I know it doesn't go into the second uh, issue okay. of these bi monthly books. Here. Okay. In Nightwing number six, we're taking a look at the hunt for Hugo Strange, who must be the person who's behind what's going on right. here. Uh, and we're going to see a uh, monstrous version of Nightwing. That's right. From that cover, <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a quite a different Nightwing on the cover there. So there, there we is. go, guys. Have fun with the Night of the Monster Man storyline, Monster Men storyline that's been going on. <clears throat> also, <coughs> for Marvel Comics, still some more Civil Should've War too. Water. I know. Uh, There's some tea. I got some sweet tea. Sweet tea. Ooh, never. <laughs> Invincible Iron Man 14. Diabetes. This might be a key issue for yeah. people to pick up because this takes a look at Riri Williams, a young lady who, who's going to be taking up the mantle of Iron Man and will be continuing it here in a few months. She is Iron Man, well, for now. So... Here we go. <laughs> this might be one for all you speculators. This might be one to check out because there's there's a bit of surprise, speculation, and controversy about this whole change uh, with Riri Williams coming up. So have fun with that, guys. Uh, uh, over in Spider-Man 2099, number 16, it is do or die time for Spidey and his allies. Right. They are trying to... Uh, Stop Alchemax and correct whatever's gone wrong within the timeline to save the future. So, we'll see how that works. Out. Very cool. Yeah. And guys, Squadron Supreme number 12 drops this week. Another Civil War 2 tie-in. But this is the final chapter of Finding Namor. The cycle continues as they try to stop Warrior Woman from resurrecting their sworn enemy, Namor. But nothing has gone to plan. So, we get to take a look at Hyperion, Dr. Spectrum, as they're forced to watch the stakes rise against them, and Blur and Thundra are pitted against Spider-Man and S.H.I.E.L.D., and Nighthawk hunts down it, Ulysses, the Inhuman, that's been causing all the Civil War II stuff, this chaos with Civil War II and the heroes. So guys, have fun with Squadron Supreme number 12. Cool. Over uh, last of the storylines, we have Dead No More. It's a prologue for this. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 19. Peter is faced with a big decision. Dan Slott, he had to do it during his run before it's up, because I think it should be up within the next year or so. Okay. Uh, he had to give you the issue where Peter has to decide, is it worth it to be Peter Parker or to be Spider-Man? What's more important to him? Nice. Plus, there is somebody, somebody within the circle, the hemisphere of Peter Parker that yeah. dies. Oh. So, it's called Dead No More. And somebody dies. They're lying to us one way or the other. The world. Have fun with that, guys. Uh, and, of course, you got the clone conspiracy coming up here with Spider-Man. So, guys, this is all leading up to that. Yeah. Check that out. Those are the storylines that we're covering for this week, guys. Now it's time for some of our favorites, some of the book, first books that we will read that will be at the top of our stack when we take them home. Randy, what is at the top of your stack this week? Love the first issue. Looking forward to the second issue of Ever After from the Pages of Fables. Wonderful. Uh, Peter. This is Peter Piper is going to have to learn to work together with Connor Wolf if they are to have anything go right for them in yeah. the investigation. Everything's been kind of turned on its ear because of the unfortunate demise of a certain character. 
in the first issue. Nobody saw that coming, I don't think. Okay. And uh, they're they're now on the search for uh, stolen and invaluable and very powerful uh, Native American artifacts. So okay. Connor Wolf is just very brash, looking forward to being a superhero. He's thinking James Bond with it. Okay. And, uh, they're supposed <laughs> to be very covert uh so okay <laughs> he's he's not uh feeling that way right with it uh over in future quest number five frankenstein jr and the impossibles are up as what? Te- yeah yeah <laughs> dude all this has been awesome that's this cool series. man uh they're up because uh team quest has been hit a pretty he- uh heavy blow from okay. uh fear so we'll see exactly what that means with everything the way they have worked all these characters in, there's a whole lot of characters, uh, but they've, they've done a good job of kind of trying to juggle it and balance it. That's cool. Very cool. Uh, up for me, guys, the third part of the Whisperer War with Walking Dead 159. Yes, totally on board with this, digging it so far. And then a new series that d- just dropped here recently, but it's issue number two comes out, Eclipse number two. This was uh, the story of... The, the sun becoming lethal to human beings. And with the end of that first issue, man, I was like, what the world? There's a guy standing out in the sun. And it's blowing everybody's mind. And when you see the effects of the sun on people, it's crazy. But we get to continue that story this week with Eclipse number two. Taking a look at David Baxter as he tries to work with the police to find out who this person is and why he's targeted the mayor's daughter. So we'll have fun with that, guys. You know what time it is now. Tons of stuff that we've covered, people. Tons of stuff that we've covered. But you can go to the comic shop and walk out with only one new thing that has come out this week. Something that we've discussed in the show today or something else that you're looking forward to. Entirely different than what we've discussed. What is the one thing that you walk out of the comic shop with your one pick of the week? Randy, what's it going to be for you, sir? There's a lot. There is so much. You know what? Uh... I think I'm going to have to see what it's all about. I'm going with black, number one. Good one, man. I'm going with that. Very good. That's the one thing. That's the one thing. I want to see what it's all about. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. For me, I'm glad you chose that, so I feel better about making this choice. (laughs) Shipwreck, number one. I definitely want to see Warren Ellis and Phil Hester, two creators I really, really like. I want to see what they're going to do with this new series that they're doing with Aftershock. But... Guys, definitely check out Black and check out Ship, check out Shipwreck. Check them all. There's so, so many, so many great books that are dropping this week. So, guys, have fun with that. Tell us your pick of the week down in the comments below. Let's have a discussion about that. And guys, let's move on to our question of the week because this is the, this is a, a, a appropriate week for it because we have a, a ton of independent stuff. That is coming out. That's very interesting. The, the, our two picks of the week are independent comics. Yeah. Uh, that's coming out this week. And our question of the week is simple. And we want to know, what independent creative team would you like to see transplanted off of any of their current work they're doing and put on a major Marvel or DC title? And what title would you like to see them work on? Uh, be, there, guys, there is so much talent out there uh, in the independent field. Some has worked for Marvel and DC. Some have not. That, I, that I'm aware of, but there's tons of talent out there. So tell us, what creative team, independent creative team, is working right now that you would love to transplant from their book to DC or Marvel? What title do you want them on? Randy, what are you thinking in this situation? Uh, I could kind of cheat, and I could say um, Paul Pope, who, uh, hmm. I would say Paul Pope on Adam Strange, because if you remember back to the Wednesday comics when they did the the newspaper, yeah, he had like a one page strip that was an Adam Strange story, and I, I would kind of like to see him actually tell a, a book of that. Uh, but since he's kind of technically already done that, uh, <laughs> what I would say instead, because I love Adam Strange, what a cool character, I would want to see Hickman and Dragato do an Adam Strange story. Uh, I just, oh, I would dude. love to see something like that. Or, I would like to see Vaughn, Brian K. Vaughn, yeah. and Fiona Staples do an uh, an Animal Man 
series. <laughs> I, I mean, both of those I think just could be super trippy. Put it, put uh, Animal Man back at Vertigo and let them tell a story. Very like cool. That, that would be awesome. So Jonathan Hickman and Nick Dragata from East of West on an Adam Strange story. On an Adam Strange story. Nice. An ongoing story. And yeah. I, I mean, they've just told some great Adam Strange stuff before. Yeah. And I would love to see his artwork, especially on the book. That would be super cool. Super cool. Uh, something that kind of led up for this question for me, I would love to see the current creative team of Paybacks, uh, Donnie Cates and Jeff Shaw, come over to the X-Men and tell an X-Men story. The X-Men because story. they are telling a fantastic super team story in Paybacks right now. And if they were doing X-Men, I'd be buying and reading X-Men right now. It would just be freaking awesome. It would be so <laughs> cool. Uh, so God, that's, that's who I would love to see. Those are some great choices, too. So, guys, tell us in the comments below. Independent creative teams that, that, that aren't doing anything for Marvel or DC right now, but they're doing some fantastic breakout work in the independent scene. Who are they? What would you like to see them come over and do on Marvel or, or DC? And what titles What titles would you like to see them work on over there? Have fun with it, guys. Name a couple of them. Have fun with it. Tell us in the comments below. We want to have a discussion with you. And blow our minds because you guys have done that in the past. Some of you guys have really thought up some really cool, unique situations and similar similar questions that we've asked in the past. Someone's going to come up with, like, it probably Buzz is going to come up with, like, I want to see Eric Larson do Superman or something like that. Or, you know, Shazam he? or something. No, he hasn't. Hey, okay, maybe not. Okay, Shazam. I didn't think so. Yeah? I don't but know. But come on, man. You don't, you don't, you don't want to see that? Come on. The, the two <laughs> tiny little legs with like, the <laughs> massive, massive upper, upper body. body. <laughs> there we go, guys. So, guys, leave us. Uh, tell us your pick of the week and answer our question of the week in the comments below. Have fun with it. We really appreciate you guys watching this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. Leave us a comment down below. Randy, anything else to add, sir? I'm spent. Dude, it was, this is a huge week and a huge episode. We kind of flew through it. Sorry, guys. I ran but through my voice on that. I know, seriously. <laughs> You'll get to rest, buddy. You'll get to rest. So, guys, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Take care. Read some great comics. Leave us some fantastic comments down below. And we will see you in our next video. Bye-bye.